Carlo Stoner. So some of you may have um, heard of us before for our Manchester roots, so it's really nice to hear about what a community they're starting to build in, in the north, um, particularly in the tech hub, and um, how that's really, really changing. So we were founded in uh, 20, 2013, so kind of three years into our journey, and uh, we've kind of gone through a period of exponential growth. And um, I work solely in the kind of data analytics and consultancy team. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about essentially what we do at Hello Soda, but also the kind of data science problems that we've had and kind of my, my strap line is deploying models in a machine learning environment, which hopefully will become clearer as I talk about this today. So um, who are Hello Soda? So essentially, we're a uh, software data analytics business that at our heart of what we do, we want to build platforms that can take alternative and unstructured data to build more meaningful insights on our, um, cost, our clients' consumer databases. So essentially what we want to do is take a range of different uh, unstructured data or alternative data, so that could be from social networks, so like streaming of tweets or a user's uh, social network like Facebook, or from maybe more um, alternative data sources such as um, the kind of more traditional data sets like electoral roll or credit bureaus and essentially combine that into a way such that our customers, uh, which are clients, our clients can see better insights onto their consumers. <coughs> we're at our heart of what we do, we're a B2B, uh, client, uh, a B2B business and so our clients essentially are making decisions on their consumer base in the personalization, marketing, credit, ID, fraud and risk space. And so our journey has been essentially the um, kind of in 2013 we founded, went by our clients and then kind of gone through this period of exponential growth that we've seen uh, big names like Free Mobile and Barclays find, find value in our solutions. Um, so the kind of strap line of what, why we, we existed is because we realised that the world had changed. People were making decisions on kind of old, redundant data that was outdated, wasn't real time. And so uh, the founders decided that, is there something that we can do? This? Everybody's using it mobiles nowadays, so surely we were able to kind of use this data to make better decisions on customers, to be able to give them a better targeted advert be able to say, actually, you've just been on holiday, do you want some suntan lotion to go with that, rather than getting pestered with that, uh, that pram that you've just, because you were looking at your sister's new baby being born on Amazon, you're now seeing like some kind of bizarre spam advert constantly, no matter where you go on the internet. <laughs> and so how do we need to do this? So from a data, data science perspective, we're kind of, we're using a variety of tools which, um, Eric's probably going to hate me now after him saying, <laughs> giving us some very good definitions around what data science is, but we do a variety of different techniques from text mining, natural language processing, psycholinguistics, artificial intelligence, and Bayesian relief networks, and essentially wrap that all up into kind of a machine learning environment such that we can build models based off of this unstructured alternative data to be able to give back features and scores to our customers. Um, so this kind of diagram gives you a kind of understanding of kind of what, what we're doing. So kind of get some unstructured data, uh, whether that be consent based from a consumer or some kind of reachable data source. We and our engine are kind of put some structure and, and sense to that. So understanding is there, is there some specific traits that uh, are coherent across that data. Then off the back of that, actually building some features and variables which actually determine, actually, if you are interested in that pram, it wasn't that one of the time that you were Googling for your sister's baby. And then delivering that into a score feature such that our clients can actually use that data that we bring back to them. Because this is the thing nowadays with the kind of ability to have all of this data out there. A lot of um, uh, businesses who have lots and lots of streams of data on their customers don't know how to use it. And so what we're trying to do is break that down in a way such that we can say, hey, this person is going on holiday tomorrow, make that targeted advertising campaign today. Or, hey, this person is applying that you've never seen before, actually they are who they say they are, and therefore we can verify them from an identity perspective. So, enough of the sales pitch. 
and more onto actually our data science uh, and machine learning issues. And so in order to do all these wonderful things, our kind of core, um, uh, these core languages that we're using are, are Python and Scala. So mainly because obviously when you're dealing with lots of um, text data, Python is more suitable to that. Similarly, there's brilliant range of packages in R for a lot of our kind of more um, grab-reusing machine, uh, grab uh, models or um, tr traditional regression models that we're building. And then also um, the back end of what we do is built in Python and Scala, so actually the, the production environment is in, is in Scala and Python, so we do run a few Scala models as well um, within that. And so our data product science problem was that we can follow our kind of traditional data data journey, which is I'm going to get some data, I'm going to create myself some, a new model. I've decided that I need to determine whether or not this person who's um, coming through one of our clients' um, uh, internet port, like on a, a client's web browser, is actually who they say they are. So I'm going to build a model to reflect that, and I'm going to deliver that as an insight to my client. So we could follow our normal kind of data journey. But what was breaking down was how do we actually put that into our production environment to feed it back to our client? And this is because what we're doing is that we have our, our, our um, this is because what we were doing, we had our, our kind of data science team working relatively independently from our, our uh, back-end engineering team. So we were building kind of our models, but not knowing how to actually deliver our models. And so what was happening was, <laughs> um, back in the early days, I would write a nice new model, which did, did some nice R analytics, figured out a really nice model to use, and then literally was handwriting the algorithm to hand it over to my engineer, who would then subsequently figure out whichever best way to put that into the deployment environment for, for our clients to consume, which was as ridiculous as it sounds and very, very painful and took, took months, <laughs> literally, um, which led to really unhappy engineers. This is what they look like when you hand them an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> when trying to explain what a random forest is doing in, in an algorithm. Um, this is me because I was really frustrated that um, from, a, from a basic level, our kind of commercial team couldn't see what our data science team was really deploying. Uh, what were you doing? You're just kind of sat in a box doing these things. Where is the kind of output from the data products that you're building? So we knew there had to be a better way. And so to take you through a work example, this was kind of our nice data journey in the team. So we kind of collected some data, did our nice exploratory analysis, cleaned and transformed that data, started to figure out, oh, is there a model here? Validated the model, maybe then went through that process again. Typical kind of machine learning pipeline that when you're developing this kind of a new machine learning model. Then we would be writing a report to communicate this, this data product or this data model that we just built. But that was the end of the journey. Uh, this was the report would be delivered, but no actual data product for, for anyone to kind of consume. And so we knew we were missing something. And that was how do we deploy our data products. And so I'm going to talk to you how we kind of bridge this gap. By the way, this isn't my own diagram. I found this on the internet and kind of summarized exactly my problem. So, uh, so I saw a guy with a Docker t-shirt on. Early. There we go. <laughs> okay. So the solution, um, models as, as a service. So essentially, um, our very, very talented engineers at Hello Soda, one of who's sitting in the middle of the, uh, this evening, um, put their heads together and, and came up with a method that essentially we would be able to be independent as a data science team in order to deploy these models. And how we would do that is we would deploy them as microservices. And so essentially we would run, um, so Docker is essentially a lightweight uh, visualization tool. And here's, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, it's, well, I'm just going to have a look at my notes just a little bit because I'm, I use the tool, but I'm not going to say that I'm, a, I'm not an engineering wizard. So um, essentially it's a, it's a, a, a lightweight vi uh, virtual machine where already all the dependencies are already wrapped up. So all the libraries that you would use for data analysis, 
all of the libraries that you need for so any Python libraries and the R libraries are already wrapped up in that Docker image. And that means that we can, um, we are able to send a, a request, a HTTP request to this service and we get back out the, the output. And so what we were able to do was transform our models into these uh, hosted services, make sure we could run the, the model locally and then that meant that we knew that we would be able to deploy that, that, that model anywhere on any machine through this Docker container. And so what that enabled us to do was test our models locally, define some kind of inputs, define the outputs of that, Docker, uh, that, of that data product, and then ensure that then wrap that up and hand that over to our engineering team so that they knew exactly what that product looked like from a start point to a, to a finish point. So no more horrible reports with lots of visualizations which you know, engineers don't really want to look at or long-winded algorithms. Finally, we could actually deliver something that said, here's what my input is, there's a Docker container with everything that you need, all the dependencies wrapped into it, and here is the output of that, and it's ready to deploy. Um, we're deploying those mo models uh, in, in, in ECS, so essentially that means that it can handle all the scaling and it also gives full, the, this process gives us full flexibility, so whatever I want to do and the tool set that I'm currently using will be able to be handled. So finally we could go from build and now we can open up our angles into test and deploy. So the impacts on data science at Hello Soda has just been a wealth of different things. Um, pure and simply, the speed of data products into the production environment is just exponential. It's no longer months. Uh, it's freed the data team up to actually solve data problems. I used to spend a lot of time thinking about very complex engineering things, which is not my skill set at all. Uh, and now I can actually just consider my data science problems around actually how, what is the best model to use to predict this particular classifier. Um, I've got, now we've kind of got this data science team independence, so we can, we can define how we want to deliver our, our, our products within this capacity. There's also now an opportunity for us to actually standardize our data process. Um, so both deploying models and also actually the testing of models. So now we can actually start to run unit tests and all of the things that actually is this a, a viable product to deliver to whether that could be our engineering team or whether it then to then be delivered to our clients. Um, easy evolution of models. The brilliancy of, of what we've done is that we can now deploy a model version one, uh, let it run in live, and then I might be working in the background on a V2, and then I can just deploy that and do a quick regression to actually see what are the differences. So before, it would be really laborious to try and figure out, well, my version two of this model, this is the impact, whereas now I, I can just figure it out straight away. And also it means that we can do lots of quick prototyping. <laughs> That's me now. <laughs> okay. Um, so in terms of next steps, um, uh, right now we're working on the kind of model logging and the wrapper enhancements, the wrappers around the models that we're actually deploying. Um, how can we kind of store the inputs to those, those models? So right now the actual production environment isn't storing the schemas that we have. Um, also with regards to kind of can we do some sort of model metadata or traceability, so how long does it take out that model to actually run in live? Um, there's an ongoing question around the maintenance of wrappers uh, for for both for all of the model for all of the languages that we create models in, so R, Python, and Scala. Um, and then also we've got um, kind of the model performance tracking and monitoring. So what we're going to be able to kind of do with, with this functionality is we're actually able to see what's how our models are performing and easily kind of uh, update models depending on whether or not the outcomes are actually what we, in it, we thought they'd be, and also model unit testing. I ran through that really quickly, so <laughs> I just looked at the time, but um, um, it was probably because I know that you're all anticipating the pizza, and I was going to say beers as well, but everybody's already got beer. So um, does anybody have any questions on kind of what? Yes? How big are your models? <laughs> what do you mean by how big are my models? So, like, uh, uh, 
do you have lots of, lots of weights, lots of parameters, or I mean, can you just ship them in a Docker image and that's no problem? Yeah, so far we've been able to ship them in a Docker image with no problem. So uh, we define right now what the, the inputs to that Docker image look like in the data team. Um, in terms of like, so we have kind of different larger scale schemas, but nothing's been problematic so far. Um, scaling hasn't been an issue for us, so no, as big as they can get so far. That way. So, particularly because on the kind of natural language processing and, and text analytics size and things, they, they are larger in terms of the inputs that go to those as well. The schemas are a lot larger and the tagging, tagging mechanism that happens at that, that stage. So, um, but it's relatively lightweight the solution. <coughs> The assembly library is like TensorFlow, or do you have a like one from scratch? Um, so all of the library, we don't really, right now, we've not developed any in-house libraries. Uh, it's definitely on our kind of data team roadmap. Um, but in terms of kind of the, the, the libraries that we're using within the, the, our modeling algorithms, it's pretty much anything that's open source, which also has been relatively limited to the So safety. <laughs> so it must be it must be data as uh, business to business. Then how do you really validate your models if you don't really know the true con like you have full context where it's coming from? Or yeah. So most of our clients will share like outcome feedback with us. So that's so there's kind of two options here. So without kind of text analytics, natural language processing side of things, the way that those models are built and then uh, verified is kind of a separate angle. So in terms of is the context of the sentence right? So we can use like a mathematical Turk or some kind of way to verify if what we've flagged as say the context of this, <coughs> this conversation is about Christmas, have we actually marked that as correct? But then um, from the consumer side of things, we also have contracts with some of our clients to share some of the information such that our models can improve and train and get better. Yeah. 